You're listening to a message presented at New Market Christian Church. We're located at 300 South 3rd Street in New Market, Indiana. We meet for Sunday school at 9 o'clock and for worship at 10 o'clock each Sunday morning. If you do not have a church home, we'd love to invite you to join us here at New Market Christian Church. And now, a message by Dr. Gary Snowden. I know that Christmas is getting really, really close. I understand that. And I know that we've all got tons of things to do, tons of places to go, all these things to cook and to decorate and, and all that. It's getting really, really close. But I'm grateful that you're here today. <laughs> Sometimes as Christmas gets closer, it's hard to get everybody to come together and to worship together like we're doing this morning. So I want you to know I'm glad that you're here this morning. I know that you've all got a ton of stuff to get done, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share with you an important but very short message this morning so that we can still learn the important things of God and still get out there and do the things that need to be done. I've titled this morning's message, God is Still With Us. Would you pray with me as we get started this morning? Dear God, thanks for sending your spirit. Thanks, dear Lord, for allowing that spirit to clean out our hearts, to circumcise our hearts, to make them right with you. Clean our hearts, dear God. Make them whiter than snow. Fill us so full of your spirit that when we open our mouth, he pours out. For it's in Jesus' precious name that we pray. Amen. God is still with us. Now, exactly how long is it until Christmas? And we can figure that out, right? We can go from Sunday, we're going to, ten, 10 days? Oh yeah, ten, about 10 days until Christmas? We can figure that out. We've got 10 days till Christmas, and that's why everyone's rushing around and making last minute preparations. Just go to a store someplace and look at the parking lot. They're full up, and you get inside, and you keep rubbing shoulders with people you don't even know. It, it's just that way out there right now because we know Christmas is getting close. We know when Christmas is. We know where we are in the scope of things. And we know it's almost upon us. But how long is it until Jesus is returning? It could be before Christmas. Did you know that? Could be on Christmas. Could be after Christmas. No one knows. And therefore, there is no way for us to make last-minute preparations. Either we're ready or we're not when Jesus sounds the trumpet by way of his angels and comes again. No last-minute preparations. That is why it is so important for you and me and all those who claim a relationship with Almighty God to be ready for Jesus' second coming. Now Christmas is the celebration of the first advent, the first coming, if you will, or appearing of Jesus. His epiphany is the big word for it. He appeared on this earth, right on the scene. We've been talking these last few weeks about how God came to do for us, you and me, what we could not do for ourselves. See, Jesus came in the flesh, arrived in the form of a little baby boy. Now, they were expecting some guy to just come in riding on a white horse and conquer the, the Romans to get the Greeks out of their lives so that they could rule on earth forever and ever. But that's not what arrived. A little baby boy, born in a manger, arrived. And then he grew into a man. And then he spread his arms and died. And then he rose again and promised to go and prepare a place for you and me. Now, when he rose from the dead and then just up and left, uh, that was a little bothersome for some of Jesus' disciples, a little hard for them to swallow. They were hoping for an earthly kingdom here on this dirt in the bucket we call planet Earth. That's what they were longing for. That's what they were looking for. When Jesus left them and went back to heaven, it was kind of confusing. But here's the thing. Jesus knew it was going to be hard, and he tempered his exit with an awesome promise. Jesus tempered his exit with an awesome promise 
found in John chapter 16, verses 7 and 8. It's going to be on the screen. You're welcome to look it up if you want to. What it says there is, But very truly I tell you, it is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. When he comes, he will prove the world to be in the wrong. And sin and righteousness and judgment. He's going to lay it on the line. He's going to make sure people understand. That's what the Holy Spirit is coming to do. To guide us. To direct us. To help us remember. To help us recall. To help us know what is wrong. To help us know what is right. To beckon us constantly in the right direction. The work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. Friends, Jesus did exactly that for us. In Acts 2.38, we're told, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the forgiveness of your sins. And then you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That Spirit comes to live in us. That Spirit comes to connect with us. He literally connects us with Jesus, connects us with God, helps us to feel inside of us His working. He comes to live in and He comes to work through you and me. The problem is we're all the time turning a deaf ear to what he has to say to us. I wish I could tell you that I never do that, but I'd be lying through my teeth if I did. How many times in our lives have we felt that tug? Man, you need to call on so-and-so. You need to go drop off some stuff by somebody's house. You know what they're going through. It's going to be hard. You need to take care of getting this and making sure that they've got what they need. That's the Holy Spirit leading us, guiding us. And when we do the things the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us to, we are blessed, they are blessed, and God is happy to call us His children. How many times, though, do we quench the Holy Spirit? God, I know what you want me to do, but I'm not willing to do it. I just have to give up too much. The Holy Spirit needs to be our guide as we go through life. Now I'm not saying we've got to run around rolling in the aisles and hollering up and jumping up and down and say, Holy Spirit, come and whack me. That, that's not what I'm saying. There's some churches that say that, but I think the Holy Spirit is a whole lot more subtle than that. I think when we open our hearts to Him, He will guide us and He will work through us because through the Holy Spirit, God is still with us. In the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 13 to 14, we read these words. And you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in Him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance and all the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise and glory of God. A deposit, an earnest deposit is the literal meaning. It's like money that's given to prove you're going to do something else. How many of you have ever bought a house? Some of you just live in the street or what? I'm just checking. You know, if you buy a house, they usually ask for money down. An earnest deposit. And what that earnest deposit says is, I am dead serious. I want to buy this. And Jesus is dead serious. I want to buy you. I want to buy your forgiveness. I want to buy grace for you. And as a result of me buying grace for you, you become mine. You become a part of my family. I want to literally pay the price you cannot pay in order that you can come and live with me forever and forever. The Holy Spirit is that earnest deposit. He gives us His Spirit when we come to Him. And that Spirit lives in and works through us as God's earnest deposit in our life. His presence is to bring us great joy, knowing that the Holy Spirit is in us and working through us. His presence acts as our guarantee that Jesus is coming again, just like He promised in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3. He said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in Me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. In essence, Jesus says, man, I'm going to get my house ready. And when I get her all decked out, 
I'm coming back to take you home. He's been working on that place for 2,000 years plus. It ought to be one humdinger of a room when we get there, or a house, or a mansion, or whatever you want to think of it as. Whenever God's people allow God's Spirit to direct them, allows God's Spirit to work through them, they can make a difference on this old earth. I think, unfortunately, far too often, we're not asking God to direct us. We're doing what we think is best. We're doing what we think is right. We're trying to come up with a plan. We're trying to come up with a way to make things happen. When in reality, what we should be doing is hitting our knees and praying that God will make things happen. Because you and I don't have very much power when it comes right down to it. Now, we can make a wave. I mean, we can say, you know what? Church is going to start at 10 o'clock, and we're going to sing some praises, and we're going to open up God's Word, and we're going to have the kids in the back, and we make a wave. We know that's going to happen. But that's not what God's looking for. He's not looking for man-made waves. He's looking for a relationship between us and Him. He wants us to love Him not only when we're here on Sunday, but every day of the week. What I can tell you is when we gather like this, God's Spirit is with us. If you don't feel Him, that's your problem. Because He shows up. You hear that? If you don't feel Him working in your life, that's not His problem, that's your problem, because He shows up. He's here. The question is, are you opening your heart and your mind, your soul, are you opening yourself up to the presence of the Holy Spirit when we gather to worship? Or are you just going through the motions? Yeah, time to stand up. Yeah, time to sit down. Oh, time to pop a pill. No, that's communion. No. <laughs> you, you know what I'm saying? Instead of looking at it as the body and the blood of Christ, we often just throw it in our mouth. And what are we thinking about? Well, we're thinking about at our house right now, there's ham in the oven. It should be cooking, smelling really good right about now. And you know, You know what I mean? you have a real tendency not to focus on what you're supposed to be focused on. And God says, the Spirit is here. The question is, are we open to the Spirit's leading? Everything we learn ultimately comes from the Holy Spirit as He guides us into all truth. Everything we do, we do because of Him giving us the power and the strength and the ability to accomplish what God has laid out for us the Holy Spirit's presence isn't just for our pleasure and enjoyment, though. He comes to go with us as we boldly proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what he's being sent to do. He's going to walk with us. He's going to help us. He's going to guide us. He's going to direct us. He's going to provide us opportunity. He's going to give us the strength to speak up if we will open ourselves up to his leading. In Matthew 28, 18 to 20, Jesus makes it very clear that that's our responsibility. Our responsibility is not just to meet here and sing praises to God. Our responsibility is to go through those doors and make a difference in the world in which we live. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. He says, you go and I will be with you. You go and I will walk by your side. Jesus, through His Spirit, is with us on our mission to reach the lost. As we go, literally, as we go, we should be going with God inside of us. We should be allowing God to work through us as we walk on the face of this earth. Our earth walk, if you will. The term Noel is a French word that points to one's birth. This Christmas season, let's give God the praise that he deserves for his wonderful Noel, his wonderful birth. He loved us enough to send his son to be our redeemer. Jesus came so that we might be given the opportunity to accept eternal life. If you're ready to accept the redemption paid for on the cross of Calvary in full by the blood of Jesus, now's the time to come as we stand and as we sing, Noel. Come to Jesus. Now your burdens lifted. 
precious blood has washed away the stain. You're listening to a message presented at Newmarket Christian Church. We're located at 300 South 3rd Street in Newmarket, Indiana. We meet for Sunday school at 9 o'clock and for worship at 10 o'clock each Sunday morning. If you do not have a church home, we'd love to invite you to join us here at Newmarket Christian Church. And now, a message by Dr. Gary Snowden. 